deal with airplane peanuts. Check any Native American's car, you always find gin and oh, femurs or something. You know, they love, yeah. they keep the dead with them a lot of times. I almost knocked this, unfortunately, almost knocked this young lady up that was from South Dakota. And she lived on a reservation, yeah. Oh. And she, like, threatened to have the baby. Oh, um, damn. How old were you? 37 wow. this year. <laughs> it was this year. And she wouldn't even be cool. She wouldn't. She threatened to have the baby, dude, and I just met her at a motel. Yeah. <laughs> and she threatened to have a baby, man. And so that's... Where how'd you meet her? Tell I met us her on, some backstory, I met her on man. Snapchat. You did? Yeah, and then I met her in person on a motel only hours later. Wow. And, uh, it went down like that, huh? Yeah. Oh, jeez. And it was definitely... Because I don't recommend that kind of stuff. I don't yeah. recommend making love to people off of Snapchat. <laughs> this is South Dakota? Dude, this was in no, this was in a different city. She was out of, she was you know out of their whatever. How'd you talk her zone. out of it? How'd you talk her she out? Came of out. It? She came uh, out. She just said uh, immediately. She's like, "If I have this baby, I'm like, what? She's like, "Yeah, I'm having it." No, we locked a thick. We locked this oh, uh, we'll this lock big girl in our town. We locked this big girl one time. We ate some acid, and we locked this big girl into a room at this party, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and we kept going in there with fucking pots of fucking warm water, fucking <laughs> pouring it on. I feel bad. I feel horrible, dude. I didn't look. We was kids, and we we're on acid, dude. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And then, bro, you can't tell me this story when I'm straight. You gotta tell me I'm mushrooms. You locked the girl. I just remember. How old were you? I just remember. How old were you? Probably 16. Oh, that's terrible. I know, but here's the thing. Let's say I was 14. That way, it makes it sound not as that's bad. Terrible. But look, she you ate. ate. <laughs> no, she ate acid with us, bro. She ate acid with us, dude. And what happened was, and we kept going in the room with like these pots of warm. I don't know why we had the pots of warm water because I think we just were <laughs> fucked up, dude. And we would really, like pour a little on her, but not like torches. Well, she wasn't in a cage or nothing. She was just, you know, free range in this room, right? But I think she was scared to come out. And then one time we went in, bro. We heard this loud sound, and we went in. And I wonder she, why. She had ran against one of the walls so hard, bro. Had fucking moved the entire wall in this house, dude. Huge girl, about two two hundred forty pounds. Beautiful girl too. The most beautiful. Biggest girl that I've ever known. Oh my god! Uh, beautiful girl, beautiful hair, beautiful face, large, just large and beautiful. But she fucking got lifted, bro. And uh, <sighs> dude, I remember this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now I feel bad about what we did to that bigger girl, bro. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you know. <laughs> but we didn't do it because she was big. We just did it. She just wanted to. She just got fucked up and she couldn't get out the room. You know. Do you think there is more porn stars or murders in the world? Mm, I think murders. You know, I actually know a guy. Probably shouldn't say this on here, but I'm not going to say names. But I know a guy who killed someone, and he said, and this isn't me saying this, dude. I wouldn't do something like this. But he said that it fucking feels good, <laughs> and he did say that. Do you know how he murdered him? Huh? Do you know how he murdered him? I don't know anything else, man. I used to be into like powerlifting and everything, dude. I used to be jacked back in the day. Really? I was an animal, dude. No, I was fucking. Were you, were you on them steroids? Sprinkling protein powder under my. Were you on them my, steroids, though? I was on steroids for a while when I was young, dude. Really? Yeah. You were on I was steroids? On testosterone, something. Yeah. You just started to run a stack just to get jacked? Yeah, it was like a southern stack. It was like testosterone and like uh, Crisco or something. And gra I was going to yeah, say gravy. Yeah. Fucking test and gravy. Deck yeah. of D-ball and fucking fried <laughs> chicken. Bad, yeah. Oh, I was so jacked. And Mountain Dew Red. Dude, I was so jacked at one point. I couldn't uh, use Q-tips in my ears because I couldn't get my... Uh, really? Yeah. Is there pictures online of this? I don't know. There might be, man. Fucking find that chin. It might be. Uh, you were just doing it just for... Just to try it out or what? I mean, if you want to really know when I really think back on what I was doing... Yeah, I'd love that. I was just... How old were you, first of all? Yeah, I was... Let me see. 17 or 18. Nope, it was after that. That's when I got involved in this damn cult. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What is that a real call? <laughs> yeah, bro. Are you not on set there? That's out in Reseda, dude. What are you doing? Huh? Why are you doing Looking that? Looking for the Lord, brother. What do you think I was doing? <laughs> Same thing you probably were. <laughs> but, uh... Hey, man! What are you... <laughs> yeah, bro! <laughs> Whatever, dude! <laughs> you never hung around black people? <laughs> Things happen, bro. <laughs> no. 
Bro, it looks like you're in like Africa there. Uh, yeah, well, you know, the dude, I was probably out east of Santa Clarita. <laughs> And you were just uh, trying to blend in? Just an adult. Yeah, dude. It's uh, rural. It gets pretty rural out there. How long, <laughs> how long were you out there? Oh, dude. Long enough, bro. Long enough to catch the sweats, you know? <laughs> long enough to put a warp zone in your spirit. <laughs> I was out there, dude, eating fucking dolphin dandruff doing dope. <laughs> out there, boy. Playing Color Me Mine with my own body. Living out there, boy, making pottery out of my dick. But I'll tell you this, man. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, steroids. Oh, steroids. <laughs> Before you were in a cult. Yeah, Damn, man. I'm doing dick pottery. Dude, I've been in some <laughs> aborigines. That's the dark arts, bro. I've been in. I've been in the dark arts. You've been in some dark places, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Now I'm telling jokes. Jesus Christ. And yeah, and then telling people when you go back home and they've never seen you, they've never heard of you, they think you're gay. And if they're just like, you won't like, they're like, you keep flying home, you don't have any money, and you're right. not bringing a girl home. You're you have these from jokes. Something. Yeah, you're, you're hiding, hiding from, from something, something. You know? Yeah. Just come out. I remember my stepdad is yelling at me in the yard one time. Told you to come out? Yeah. I was like, I'm not fucking gay, bro. <laughs> I was like, I'm just not flying some girl home that I just met. You wow. know, just to prove to He's you guys. He's trying to catch you. Yeah. Yeah. catch you to lie. <laughs> If you, the worst has got to be if someone says you're gay and you are, but you don't want to. Oh admit yeah, it, that'd be like, sick. Shit. Area. Yeah, you change shit. your clothes the next day. You come dressed like in a mafia outfit or something, <laughs> like something to totally take them hot off the trail. Or you know, like that with a, putting out two podcasts, three podcasts a week. He does that many a week. Wow. Joe's fucking man. Joe's got this game locked down. How's he to talk to? Is I, I, oh. he just started kind of like? Well, give me a little bit more FaceTime. You know, he's great. He's great. You see, he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, does he? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. But that's fine. You know? Yeah, I don't think he does. Yeah, he might not believe in Jesus Christ, but... <laughs> I mean, I think he believes... And I'm in drinking a... out of his mug right here, look. <laughs> I, believe, I think he believes in a higher power. I mean, he's done DMT, so he's spoken to the aliens. But damn, you fought, dude. Like, if somebody... Top ten. Dude, I, I could not. I just don't even think I could fight, man. I remember one kid attacked me once in school. It didn't go really well. I got attacked by a bunch of dogs. Uh, <laughs> dogs? That's a different animal. Yeah, but literally, still, literally, different animal. literally. Yeah, like, but how do you out fuck there. with a dog? I Two of them know. came back and attacked me on my birthday again a year later. <laughs> uh, on your birthday? Swear to God, when dude. they come back, they came back like it's this fool's birthday. Let's you take any bites? Uh, yeah, I took a couple bites. Went to the hospital. It was my birthday. I remember I was 11 years old, and then at 12 years old, two of them came back and got me again. <laughs> like, they knew. That's what I'm saying, man. Animals are... But I also remember, because where I'm from, if you see two mentals hug, and you call the cops on them. And that was a rule when I was young, and that's true, dude. That's true. If you see two mentals hugging, you call the cops immediately, because once two mentals don't make a non-mental... You know, rarely do they. And it's a risk, and it's a it's high risk, low reward. That's what they call that. I think I had a little bit of that poor white anger. You know, the same type of just, you know, nobody gives a fuck about poor white people in America, it seems like, you know, except for poor white people. So, you know, I had a little bit of that angst. You know, I knew, dude, I mean, you know, I grew up around some fucking real crazy poor white people. You know, the dude, no arm. They had a dude in our town, no arms. Used to fucking fight everybody. You know that dude. You know what I'm saying? He'd get you in that lurch. He would catch you with his between his chin and his chest. <laughs> he would fucking snack you like a snake. We were talking about this dude. I, his boy I, Gert was his name, I, and he would just get you like that, bro. He and he'd no, choke you down. He had no arm. No arms at all, and he'd fight anybody, dude. And he would choke you. He would. So if you went to punch him, how would he block? Oh, bro. He'd spin out of it. He'd spin, he'd duck, he'd dodge. The dude had. I mean, he just. And would he catch your hand with his neck? Huh? Would he catch your oh, hand? Oh, he would just lurch at you. And, bro, the thing is, here was the. Oh, you know what? If he hits you with that shoulder, you're going down. Uh, yeah, part of it. The big move was that choke. He would get. He would catch you like this. Where would he catch you? Your hand? In your neck. He would catch you neck to neck. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Oh, once he got you neck to neck, Gert, you, but this whole family, the whole family was fucking... He could choke you out. Psychos, bro. Brother had sharpened half of his teeth on one side of his mouth, dude. These people would fuck you up. One of the kids was in a wheelchair, or just... They never taught him to walk, I think. I don't even think he was crippled. They just never taught him to walk. And so the other brother would carry him on his back everywhere, like a backpack, dude, and didn't even give a fuck. Maybe it's because these people are 
are away from society, an entire family? No shirts, bro. Oh Whole my family, God. zero yeah, shirts. No, nobody, those people don't wear shirts. Not The girl didn't have shirts either. They had one girl in the family. What was her name? Jessica. <laughs> she was normal? She was, you know, she was pretty nice. She was, I thought she was a sweet girl for as tough as, you know, everything that had gone on down there. And they used to put a board over the sink at night and one of them would sleep over the sinks. They had 11 children. I mean, the little, I mean, the house, no joke, was two two of these studios, you know, and they had 11 kids in there. But yeah, it's like I grew up in, in that type of environment where it's just like, I don't know, you don't feel like anybody gives a fuck about you. So I think a lot, of, it took a long time for that, some of that to get out of my system. I still feel it when I go around like really rich people who think that they know everything. Man, that stuff makes me mad, dude. Yo, it's funny. I was telling Lee that this morning I woke up. I mean, I slept so much yesterday and last night I fucking slept hard. I woke up like a fucking 4.30 in the morning wide awake, yeah. ready to fucking kill Monday, ready for <laughs> kickboxing at night. <laughs> and I did my usual shit. I went over my audition on uh, the sides, and I wrote it out, and I wrote my stuff for the day. And then I went and I fucked around. Then I went on Messenger. Like, you ever go on Facebook Messenger? Mm -hmm. I went on Messenger just to see, because sometimes you, messages accumulate. You don't yeah, know. yeah, you get some in there. I got a message this morning. It was like the weirdest thing. It was like fate. I was telling Lee when I came in. I go, Lee, were you not in the green room with me all weekend? And they go, yeah. I go, Lee, I got an email today from a couple. Yeah. I went to their Facebook page. I didn't even answer them back. But the first line was, you're a sham. Like a scam, like whatever that word is. Mm -hmm. A farce. A farce or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to see you Friday night, and we could visibly tell that you were on cocaine. No. Oh, my God. They were genie. They were like drug geniuses. They had to be Rogan people. When I went back to their page... They had 10 pictures with Rogan. They wow. went to see Rogan like at eight places. They're the ones that always ask Rogan annoying questions on the road. Oh, like, yeah. And Rogan will look at them like, are you fucking crazy? Oh, I look. There's no better look than when Rogan gives when that Rogan look. When Rogan gives you that look. Are you fucking crazy? They, they, they just <laughs> say stupid shit to Rogan to seem intellectual. And there's 200 people behind your guy. Chit, chit, let's go. Take a yeah. hike. Take the picture and take a fucking hike. Yeah. So you could tell he's one of those guys that he'll see Rogan and right away he called me a farce that i was obviously on cocaine that there was no way that i was clean that my energy levels on stage were too high for my age for me to be on cocaine mm. he said but i knew how to hide it you weren't <laughs> sniffling or wiping your nose yeah. <laughs> oh dog as soon as you do a line of coke this shit starts dripping out of your fucking oh, nose dude. that's the first tell i could i could look at somebody now now i could really see it. oh yeah but then when i was under the influence mm -hmm. i couldn't see it now i could really see it dude everybody my buddy this one dude used to put his he would start to get a little do a little dust you know put Start touching his asshole, bro. By the end of the night, if we had a couple of bags, he'd have four fingers in his fucking ass, dude. He had like a... You know, some of those people eat their hair. You see those videos where people eat their hair, you know? He just had like a weird tick like that where he would just... I don't know what it was. He just like would, under the pants. He would go in the pants. Oh, in his ass, in his own ass. Oh my god. Yeah, I had a guy that used to do this. He would hold up and like he would be talking to you, and he'd go. Oh, and he would tighten up his neck. Don't bro. do that, bro. He would just That's be talking. Much, and he would dude. just flip yeah, out yeah. time to time. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. And then I had another guy that when he get coked up, he was bald, so he oh. always felt like something was landing on his head. <laughs> So every eight minutes, he would tell you to shh, shh, and he would look at, point to his head to tell you that, look, is there a bug? Do you see it? Like, type, but you can oh, see damn. it. That's what was like, he wants you to be an investigator for him? Yeah, like, come yeah. on, do I have anything on my head? Let me know. It's like, <laughs> those people that tell you your nose is clean, I got anything on my nose? Yeah. He would look at me. I could, He didn't have to say that. He would, st <laughs> like, let's say he started snorting at 11 with me. Yeah. By 1.30, that would start. He wouldn't get paranoid. He wouldn't drive me crazy. He wouldn't damn. say a lot of shit. He would just tell me that he had a spider on his head. <laughs> and then after two or three hours, he would start smacking his head. Oh, come on. And that's when you would fucking die of laughter. <laughs> when he would smack his own head. Be honest, Joey. After like the first couple of times he asked you, would you just start like looking <laughs> above his head? Just like, I think there's something on your forehead. Oh, I tortured him for days. <laughs> that went through. Where he's just switching shirts, just fucking. So then every 40 minutes... He'd have on a different colored shirt. So if you were a new person, you didn't know. You'd be like, what the fuck, man? You'd think you were tripping even harder. Dude, we had time. And I remember bad acid would come through town. And, like, everybody would start acting a certain way. People would start 
you know, I remember one time people wore like a bunch of like kind of, you know, Grateful Dead type of stuff. People wore vests. They'd have like a bad batch of ass. It would come through next, you know, half the town's wearing fucking vests. You know, women are gelling their hair down. I remember one time. Um, dude, they had this one dude at this party and he'd apparently had taken a bunch of ass that he put in his mouth. And for, you know, four bucks, whatever, he would like spit into your mouth like a hit of acid. Why would you do something like that? That's disgusting. But there wasn't anything else to do. So, so I'm going to let some fucking stranger spit acid in my mouth. For f Yeah. For four bucks. I can put the acid in my mouth for free. But we didn't have it. Oh, you didn't have the four bucks. We had the four bucks. We didn't have the acid. He had it inside of his system. And for four bucks or in his, you know, he put it in his mouth. And then for four bucks, he'd fucking fire it into you. So next thing you know, bro, we spent about $36. We're fired up. Dude, at this dude's party, this dude, I'll tell you, this dude, Icy Mike, right? So this dude used to get ice from anywhere. Like, he would get water, and he had, like, a nice freezer. His family had one of those. You ever go downstairs in, like, some people's house, and they keep meat in, like, an extra freezer? Like, they don't want you stealing their meat, so they put it in, like, a special freezer down in the basement. Or the freezer has, like, a flat top. It has, like, a door on the top, and you open it like that. And the whole thing's a freezer. There's no refrigerator. You know what I'm talking about? Like a big freezer? Yeah, yeah, the old school. Yeah, so these people had, uh, you know, this dude, Icy Mike, would get water from different places, you know? Fucking local water. Fancy Lake Mead, Lake Pontchartrain, uh, Mississippi River, and freeze it. And then people come over and eat the ice in the summer. We'd go over there and eat ice. He'd have, he had water from everywhere. He had water from Ireland, France. Like Powell, you know what I'm saying? So we'd go buy Icy Mike's and fucking have a piece of ice. He'd break you off of some fucking chunk of ice and everybody's sitting having ice from other places, you know? It was kind of... Are you sure it just wasn't... He just didn't write it on the bottle? Like it was all from his faucet? Oh, no, you could taste it. was from different places, man. Some of it was brackish. Some of the shit was fucking, you know, Iceland. Some Where did of the, Icy Mike get the fucking water from? Different places, man. He, he went himself? Oh, maybe his family went. I think his dad did some kind of traveling work. <coughs> you thought he brought back gallons of fucking water? Have you lost your goddamn mind? Bro, I'm telling you, there's no other you way. You guys got tricked. Nah, -uh, there's no way he could have gotten these flavors in this water. What fucking flavors? Did they did this? They did. This. Remember? Oh, I remember one time I got stuck in a tunnel. My car broke down in a tunnel in uh, Pittsburgh, and I had to defecate extremely. And that's French actually for shit. Yeah, yeah. And I had to defecate. And uh, so I got in my back seat of my car, and the only, like, I didn't have any choice. This was like, you know, it was like something had gotten into my body, like a pink eye had gotten into my stomach. Whoa. And uh, and all the shit in my body was coming out of my body. You had pink it was eye like, in your stomach? Yeah, it was like, hey, we need all this shit out of here. I had gingivitis once in my stomach. Did <laughs> you yeah. really? Yeah. In your mouth? And I got diarrhea from that, too. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I got down there. And I had to defecate into a Frisbee. I had an uh, upside-down Frisbee was all I had. <laughs> Daily, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, yeah. What? And so wow. I'm in this tunnel. There are cars whizzing by. Here's the crazy thing. Yeah, extremely hard to poop when cars are going by at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, mm. and furious too. Yeah, furious. Like, and also white people. Like it was Pittsburgh, so it's furious white people driving by. I can, if other people, some certain ethnicities, I can shit easier when they're driving by. Honestly, you know, like if a couple of brothers are rolling by, blasting some fucking. Good music. I can fucking blow ass all day into a frisbee. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No problem. I'm part of the, you know everything is everybody's you know everybody seems like it's more laid back. Yeah, yeah. But an angry white dudes, you know, rolling by, you know, six, seven. Well, they would probably call somebody too, huh? Oh, they weren't calling anybody. I mean, the only f free finger they had, they were waving it out the window. At me. So <laughs> yeah, they yeah. weren't using it to dial the phone. So you shit on a frisbee. I had a shit on the open. The now the, the you yeah, know, not the top part, but the bottom part. Wait, a frisbee is basically a cup, did basically the size. <laughs> Oh, yeah. a plate. It's a plate. A plate. Well, a, a, a plate is just a cup. That's Wait, way no, 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 no. Let me get this straight. Hang on. Are you a plate still is just a wide, wide, wide cup? <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you pulled over? Oh, pulled I pulled over. it. Yeah, I pulled over the car. I think honestly, I'd run Why out of gas. Why did you just shit on the ground? Why did you have to like put I was a in plate a tunnel. underneath? Yeah, so it's dark. Shit yeah. on the fucking guy. What's What's shit? In a tunnel, Why you idiot. Okay, you should be familiar with tunnels, dude. Why? Huh? Because of Vietnam. Because oh, you're gonna do that shit again right now, man? What because, shit, whoa, bro? Whoa. Why, why are you? Why are you? Oh, oh dude. no, dude! Whoa, right, you're, you're doing that Nam shit again, huh, bro? What Nam? What? You, you thought that I was digging tunnels in the Ho Chi Minh Trail and trying whoa. to attack you people? No, I thought you, you meant that was Nam, me? the fruit juice, the pomegranate fruit juice that's always in there. What no, is that stuff? No. Called? <laughs> palm. Palm. Yeah, no. 
know, dude. No, not Pom Nom. Bro, I don't believe in Vietnam. I don't believe in, in it. It, it happened? Huh? Oh, you, it, it's I'm conspiracy. not saying it didn't happen, dude. <laughs> Are you those... Uh, they never found the boats, dude. You oh, know? right. It's just like slavery. They never found too, the boats. Yeah. What, what do you mean tunnels though, bro? So anyway, I'm in a tunnel. I'm in a tunnel. And there's only two lanes going each way. There's no, there's nowhere to get out in a tunnel. Like in a tunnel, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Cars are whizzing by. Yeah. And yeah. so I had to get in the back seat and defecate into this Frisbee. Right. And um, and then wait for the cops to come. Why did you call the, why, the cops? Why did the cops come? I had to call the cops. I had somebody, I, well, somebody, not somebody. I had just shit in a Frisbee. The meat, the, uh. Oh, you ate them, you're saying? Yeah, but the. You guys ate owls? Yeah, I don't I, think that's legal. You probably shouldn't say that on a podcast. Well, <laughs> I didn't have a lot. Over <laughs> I'll Some tell you this. If you say. want to feed a family of four, you can't just have one owl. I will say that, though. <laughs> well, if you look at what it looks like without the feathers, it looks like that's a I'm fucking demon. Yeah. You know? It's a real bait and switch, I feel like. It's one of God's hidden agendas. Well, I was talking to someone about peacocks about this, and I started talking about it on stage. I don't know. Yeah, that's a duck, bro. But it's, it says peacock. That is oh, something man. else. That See, is that meningitis, doesn't seem I right, think. though. Go back up yeah, to the bro. peacock picture. They have a, they just dropped that rabbit and mm. said, fuck it. And I stopped the car and to check it out. I was like, whoa. That's flirting, really, it sounds like. Flirting? Oh, if a oh, bird drops a know. rabbit at your feet? Hey, bitch. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. ready to fuck. Probably. Yeah, like you didn't love the French? I love the Canadians. French Canadians? Yeah, I'll take them. You love Canadians, period. I love Canadians, period. But do you love French Canadians? Yes, because they are Canadian. But French, mm. bro. Not into French? I, and nobody is. They make great wine. Yeah. No, that's not true. People go to Paris every year. Yeah, but they leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the kind of place people are milling around, man. <laughs> like, I got fucked. One of my best friends got fucked up one time, and he started talking about Asian people. We never even seen any Asians in our life. And he Never started, in your life? No, and I guess maybe like in a past life, he might have known some Asians, you know? <laughs> and so he starts bringing up their names, bro, and knowing them, and knowing shit about them on this mattress in this house. And I'm like, fuck, dude, you're fucked up, bro. I'm leaving, right? So apparently I'm the kind of friend that when your friend is at his worst, you fucking leave, bro. <laughs> Because I was he's just talking about it. Chinese people. Ah, yeah, he's well, never we, met Chinese people. Ne- we never known any. So ne- what is he saying? He's just saying like, "Hey, you remember fucking like Sin? Like you remember fucking Sun Lamb, bro? He was there for us, you know, and all this shit." <laughs> I'm like, "Sun Lamb, bro? We don't know him, dude. You know, and he was fucking like talking about Dorothy, Dorothy, Dorothy. You know, we didn't know any Asians, bro. And I'm like, I gotta get away so from where this you came dude. from. When you grew up, there was no Asians in that neighborhood. Not when you were there. Now there's probably four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. No, we live in a small town, dude. I mean, I What's remember. The population? Uh, we probably had about 2,000 growing up. Oh, shit. This one dude I remember was trying to be an Elvis impersonator. He said he was an Elvis impersonator, <laughs> bro. But he was just uh, a fucking alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need any Elvis, bro. You know? We got 2,000 people. We need fucking gas money. And we, we need, need jobs. Good, yeah, we need ideas, oh. bro. <laughs> Give us some fucking ideas. Those fucking Elvis impersonators are a pain in the ass. Dude. Oh, they're they the really worst, are. Dude. They really are. Get bro. a fucking life, they, I got to tell you something. You know, I told you. Really hook yeah, up with that yeah, girl. Yeah, what yeah, happened to that you? That fucking monster. Yeah, no, it's always some fucking monster, dude. Bro, it's, I remember this one girl. I brought, uh, we had this thing for a while. If you would visqueen queen a chick, right? And that's if you would bring a chick home and she would fall asleep or at her place or at your place. And you'd put like a piece of visqueen over her body, right? What the hell like, is visqueen? she was asleep. No, it's not a big issue. I think people don't spend enough time with real ass animals. A lot of these animals out here are bullshit, <laughs> trained, imports. <laughs> Fake ass little Dalmatians and shit. Dude, that's people in parks, man. People do anything in a park out here. You gotta notice that out here. Like, I mean, where I'm from, a park is a place to picnic, you know? Maybe chill do, out. yeah. Chill out, make art or something, but. Frisbee? Yeah. Out here, it's a lot of drug scenes. Drug, people living out there. Yeah, a lot of gang activity, a lot of butt sex. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> that, sex. dude. Maybe. I don't know if it's what A lot of that Magic is. Johnson, that's what they call it. <laughs> You know, people out there getting that Magic Johnson. <laughs> that Magic Johnson. Uh, <laughs> my, brother, my brother cried when Magic Johnson announced he had AIDS. No way, <laughs> He bro. started crying. He's one of his favorite players. Oh, bro, that's gayer that. than even getting AIDS from a dude is crying when another dude gets it. <laughs> so so then I just got into stand-up, and I always like making people laugh. Like, I used to do a yeah. similar thing when I was a child. At the lunch table, we'd get some kids who were mentals or a couple of them might have been mentals and a couple of kids that were well you know and we get well, there and sit well, them to make them drink milk 
and then tell jokes and do stuff and t- tell the one of them just blew milk out of their face, you know? And if you get some straight up, just a couple minnows, boy, some straight up sawed off humans, you get them to, dude, you get them to for straight up blow leche out their dome, dude. That's America right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I knew, I was like, oh, I got some kind of a gift here, you know? I almost blew the throat out of this one boy. Oh, yeah. Almost threw the this Jesus. almost blew blew the throat out of this this one boy named Tot T O T was his name. <laughs> kind of a bad name too to be mentally challenged, but also easy for him to spell. And I'm not joking. That's what his father said. And um, easy for him to spell backward and forward. Same name, Tot. So. Uh, That's true, man. Was this guy's real, his name was Todd? Yeah, <laughs> Why are you so laughing at him? It's just a funny sounding name. That's all. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it so was pretty funny, yeah, I guess. Todd. Yeah, well, you know, let's Tot. talk about Todd. Sometimes like, he would just say T O T was his name, but I yeah. knew it was Todd. Yeah. He would try to spell it out, and, you know, like he was tricking me. Yeah. So, uh, so did you do like the open? Mike circuit in LA yeah just, started doing mean, open mics here like at Marty's or where like at mm-hmm. uh, the comic meltdown and stuff no they had a place uh, over on the west side of town I lived yeah. I was sleeping under a buddy of mine had a bed and I was sleeping under his bed for $150 a month oh wow and sometimes even in his bed sometimes <sighs> When he would be out of town or when he would leave for work, I'd climb up into his bed, dude. And I've never been heavily homosexual, but I will say this, that there's nothing really gayer than getting into a man's warmth after he's already left the room, you know, and climbing up into his bed. A man you don't even really know that much, but still catching that hit off of his temperature, you know? It's true, man. Yeah. You go over to somebody's house, dude, who you don't know that much, yeah. and when they leave the room and get the get, get out of their bed, you get into their bed. That should make you a, never told them that, though. That should make a man out of yeah. you fast, dude, or it won't. But you find out who's who pretty quick when you're doing stuff like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. I remember I got on a school bus one day, and the man didn't even take us to school. He just drove us around. <laughs> and, uh, Fuck off. Swear to God. And then just drove us back home eventually. <laughs> What's wrong with him? He didn't say anything He's either. Probably drunk. And when at a certain <laughs> point, he you don't ask. Dude, in cocaine, oh, go back to that vest story, man. So well, here's what happened. <laughs> so I, you know, I would get, I would do some cocaine at the house and put on these different vests. How I many had. did you buy again? I don't know. I spent too much on them, but I would probably say <laughs> the priciest one I had was probably about two hundred ten dollars. Nice, damn, yeah. And so I would get fucked up and put these vests on and put on sunglasses and not no like Buffalo Bill shit, but at least partying by myself, you know. Mm-hmm. And one time I was making a smoothie, you know, because I, you know, I have. I got like a new, I don't know what kind of blender it is, but it was pretty nice. And I was making like a nice smoothie and I'm fucking coked up. I'm partying, you know, mm. I'm living high on the hog. Got these two vests on maybe, right? And I thought I, <laughs> dude, I thought I heard something outside, right? Which is kind of weird to even think of when you have a blender going, right? So I leave out of my apartment to go in the hallway, lock myself out with the blender going. <laughs> 2 30 in the morning coked up out of my brain right <laughs> now i have to go to my landlord dude uh, who lives r- right down the hall oh, no. and tell him dude i'd have to get my butt waxed i think bro that's my thing like i have so much hair on my butt like i walk if i'm hooking up with a chick i walk out of the room backwards so she doesn't see my butt <laughs> it's that bad it just makes it i'm self-conscious about it you know why don't you uh brazil wax it I'm just scared of that, man. I met a girl, and she waxes people's balls, too. And yeah, they call it b and button balls. Oh. It's actually the most common practice for men. Is it? Yeah, I used to date a girl who uh, specialized in that. And she, she was like, man, 60% of my client are men. Mm. She goes, they do the b and You want to come in? I'm like, what is it? She goes, balls and butt. They literally do all that, the taint, and then your, your booty hole. <clears throat> I, I, I had, her, oh. I had my, a girl try it once. Uh-huh. It's on the inside of my thigh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Never again. Hurt? I'd rather get a tattoo on my fucking face. Oh. It hurts so bad. I'd rather get that fucking Nate stamp, dude. Me too, bro. I'd get that 100%. Tat on my Don't Nate. Don't do it, man. Yeah. But you sh- if, you, if you have a hairy ass, like if I could braid your ass there, yeah. uh, you should probably get it removed. You couldn't braid it. You could gel it down, though. Like you could his... part it to the side? Dude, I had an uncle, and he had so much hair on his neck, he would gel it down for church because <laughs> he didn't want to um, shave it off because it was his hair. 
and it was like a thing against God. You gelled down the sides, huh? Oh, he gelled his whole neck hair down. You might want to gel the. You, you basically got a duck tail. <laughs> oh, dude, a look, duck tail hanging out the back. I look like shit, man. You know, <laughs> but nobody expects anything out of me. That's the best thing. You don't think like, so? you show up? People look. You know, people ask, "Where's the honey guy?" You know, that's obviously been. Where's the yeah, honey? <laughs> we look like you've been stung by bees bro, all the time. <laughs> Why do I? Look, are you saying I'm bloated? <laughs> Doesn't he? <chin? laughs> do I look bloated? Bro, it looks like you try to drink honey right out the hive and a bunch of bees got you, bro. Wait, are you saying I'm yeah, swole no, or I'm fucking bloated? I mean, you're swole for sure, dude. I'd be swole too if fucking 200 bees were babysitting my face all the time. You look like you got fucking stung by a bunch of bees, dude. Bro. Where do you live at, bro? In a comb? You got to tighten up, bro. You're going to get diabetes, dude. Bro, what the fuck, dude? Come on, man. Conversation at the store one night, you know, like last week, some guy got fined with 30 pounds of hamster bones, you know. They did in my town. They just busted the, the, a man. It just doesn't. Right away, you got to stop what you're doing in that conversation and giggle. Because mm -hmm. nine out of ten people wouldn't be proud that that happened in their hometown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they wouldn't even oh, mention it. If somebody comes up to me and goes, uh... Are you from New Orleans? Not really. I'm from Texas. <laughs> Wait a second. I got to go. You know, you, you get to that point. Most fucking people would be embarrassed to say something like that. <laughs> or it would take them 10 minutes after everybody told their story yeah. to say, oh, by the way, there's a guy. I'm no, we were just talking. It's Tuesday oh, night. Dude, yeah. We were I ready remember. to go home, and you came out with it. And I'm fucking, me and Lee were dying in the car <laughs> like, what's he talking about? Hamster meat. What the fuck is he talking about? And that's yeah, it. they busted him, man. Listen, dog. they got him. What if? Thank God. <laughs> Damn. I like the like it's like they got him. No, I'm they glad got they got him, him, dude. Thirty pound bag of hamster one, like, I mean that's because you have to. There's not as much meat. There's very little bone in a hamster, bro. Them um, hams got a ham probably has like a quart, like an eighth of an ounce in its chest plate, bro. You can't even make a wish on their bones. You know, there's nothing in there. Where do you get all those hamsters from? That's it. Well, they breed them in our town. I used to work for this group. They used to sell tattooed hamsters and guinea pigs after... Uh, they tattoo them? Yeah, they used to brand them with concerts and raves. They would say it's tattooed just to make people not be as sad about it. But it was a brand, bro. A brand, bro. <laughs> of what? With like a uh, heat and ink, bro. For what? Like, what did it say? Uh, 311, Green Day, anything like of different bands that were coming to town. <laughs> Toadies. <laughs> Swear to God, up. bro. Toadies, Acid Bath. Uh, who else? Uh, rave. Whatever, bro. We used to truck these hams into the city and fucking <laughs> vend them, bro. <laughs> we did, man. Because there wasn't much, there wasn't much work in our town, dude. You know, you had to get what you could get, and they had a man that bred hamsters. And uh, and then they had to do the, the tattoos, and they fucking met up, and that was a merger. That's big business, you know. And they started uh, a merger. They started doing it. Man, <laughs> I got me some three hundred mouse in my house and shit. And some other guys like, you know what, man? I'm a pretty good tattoo artist. <laughs> That's Louisiana. And that's it. A merger is formed. <laughs> that means someone listening to this right now has had a hamster with like a band label on it. Like Who the fuck it? buys a hamster? Listen, if I went to a concert, do you think I'm bringing a hamster home with fuck fucking yeah. ACDC? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm, not. I'm, about be, to rock. I'm gonna be oh, fucked yeah. up the whole night with this hamster in my But pocket. when you leave, when you leave, Coco, when you leave the place, that's when we get you, bro. You get it there. People are leaving. They're on ecstasy pills. They're on Molly. You leave. You get that fucking hands. You get that warm little piece of God in their hands. They buy it every time. Yeah. A lot of black people, and I will say this, because this is really factual, and I've spent a lot of time around, <laughs> you know, in the dark arts, and I don't mean that's not black people in general. That's <laughs> the dark that's art. That's voodoo. That's black magic. That's everything. Black magic. That's New Orleans. Voodoo, son. That's, that's the Louisiana. underground. Yep. You know, I grew up in a mixed neighborhood, dude, and uh, black people don't really know. They don't differentiate between indoors and outdoors. <laughs> what do you mean? Outdoors can be indoors, dude. What do you mean? Outdoors can be indoors. Black person, you can put them outdoors, and you put them indoors. Same volume levels, same speed. There's no inside voice. There's no. There's zero inside. There's voice. no etiquette when you go indoors. Well, they just don't. I don't. I don't think they believe in like a lot of structures and 
I don't know. I don't want to say woodwork, but I want to say overall that they the difference between indoors and outdoors when it comes to it's most so black incredibly people, it's so incredibly vaguely racist. It's so like, funny though. It's so funny. They, they say that no, there's no true. filter. No, what they say yeah, when you're poor. It's true. But a lot of people who are poor, it's a socioeconomic thing. So a lot of people that are poor, a lot of times, I guess, have to rely on each other. Like they notice shit that that say rich people wouldn't notice. Yeah. Because they have to. Because they, they you, you're kind of relying on your neighbor on usually sharing a bathroom. There's a lot of stuff. People are on you. They're people. People. And, and They're it creates, people. People, yeah, and you got, yeah. and it creates sort of a this this feeling of competition. Where but that like, doesn't mean you way. can't lower your voice when you're in the mall or in the theater, right? And that's just what I'm saying. That's his point. Right. Yeah, I want to be heard. Yes, yeah. A lot of my black friends even do not. Pra- yeah, they don't have indoor voices. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think I use too many words. <laughs> just close the car, open the window, and listen to it. And the three white dudes <laughs> walked away. He just tuned in. Fuck yeah, what Dude, bro! You never get to see a good fucking smackaroo. No. Oh, no, not no. especially not on the not on the West Coast, no, dude. You never get to you see, see a shooting. Or you that's see a it. lot more smacking smackaroos where you're from. Oh, you know? down south, I saw a brother take a bite out of a Vietnamese guy once, dude. <laughs> Took a bi- huge bite out of his fucking arm, bro. Meat and everything, bro. Ripped oh, it right out. Jesus. The Vietnamese guy was like threatening him with all this karate shit and everything, and his brother just grabbed him and fucking bit right into him, dude. <laughs> bit right Did into him. Think about him. it. That's the way to do it. Oh, yeah. That stops karate all the time. Because oh, yeah. I don't care what type of karate you got. They got no defense for the bite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody got. Well, what if a motherfucker goes to bite you? <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. I got to call the main Jap and fucking open out. Yeah. Hold on. Let me put my Komodo on, dude. And they bite your ass, dude. And you uh, remember that every time you try uh, to fucking hug somebody and if you got a little divot in uh, it. You know, you got a speed bump in your fucking hug. Why did I let Lee talk me into eating mushrooms on a Wednesday night? Like, look at your head, Lee. <laughs> look at Lee, bro. Open your eyes, bro. I can't. Damn, dude. What the fuck? Lee, you're already fucked up. You, you gave me 800 before they let me Oh, we're training. I told you. When you go down yeah, to fuck, Lee. when you join the Marines, they don't send you to yeah. Miami. You know, with a fucking seagull. No, they send what? you to fucking Paris Island debt. What Marines are they putting Lee in? Dude? My own private Lee, Marines. Oh, yeah, this is the church of what's happening now, dog. I love it, bro. We got our own Marines. They Look, come in all shapes and sizes. Hey, man. Well, then listen to me, man. has got a use in the Marines. When you, you know, no, know. I don't. Weird place. And it's one thing that's unique to me is my childhood and my perspective of it, you know? Yeah. It, it, it will, you, grew up, you grew up in... I grew up in Covington, Louisiana. And our town's famous. Um, Lee Harvey Oswald went to our middle school. Uh, <laughs> Pistol, Pete, Pistol Pete Maravich lived and died in our town. Really? Uh, two good shooters. That's the joke that I use off of that. <laughs> um, but like Tulane University had their primate testing facility in our town. It's where most people worked at, right? So, and in 1994, like 70 infected monkeys got out in our town, and they literally, the police came to YMCA summer camp and let the oldest kids leave to help them look for these monkeys, right? Are you serious? Yeah. And I remember like. Like, guys, they had guys with, like, rebel flags in their truck. I'm like, it's not a racial thing, guys. This is, these are fucking 70, these are chimpanzees and macaws that are loose around town, you know? This isn't a gang that's moved in, you know? Uh, But I remember me and a couple of other kids, I still remember having a wet bathing suit on, cornering a fucking chimpanzee outside of a Kenny Rogers Roasters with a police officer. And three other kids, like, <laughs> rah, 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 you know, by this drive through And this fucking fat elf of a woman honking at us. Like, we're ruining her, you know, dream shake she's buying or whatever. <laughs> and her fucking cornbread. But we're trying to fucking Shut. save our town from a fucking... Who knows what this from, monkey from, had? From a maybe fucking yellow Planet fever. of the Apes apocalypse. Yeah, maybe something Walter Reed missed. Could have been yellow <laughs> fever. Um, what... Wait... I really feel like I grew up in the stray animal belt of Louisiana, and they don't really have this anymore because everybody has pets now. But they had a long time where there was just, I felt like thousands of strays running around. Like Joey Diaz, his, he got bit by animals. I got jumped by a bunch of cats on my birthday once, dude. I'm not even joking, dude. And one of them, I swear to God, some of them got me on the ground, and one of them came off a fucking rooftop from next door. I swear to God, I still remember a couple of them were getting me and looking back and seeing one come from something in the air. And uh, and they had tons of stray animals where I was from. You couldn't – you had to infuse that in everything you did, wherever you went or if you were going to bike or play ball. Cats. cats. And that will make you feel like a little bitch too. I mean, first of all, your dad's dying, and now there's cats jumping you. It's just really – but anyway, so I was like, we used to pull these bodies off of the interstate and bury them off the highway, right? Holy shit. 
because dogs were getting hit there. I mean, literally, they were fucking piling up. You know? <laughs> and I remember one time we found a bunch of nudie mags in the ground. Somebody had hit a bunch of, you know, pornography in the dirt. And I remember we got down and somebody then had we realized I'd never seen any sex before, right? So somebody somebody cut out all the pictures of the actual insertion points in these magazines. There was probably eleven pornography magazines. Club, some of the older ones, club, finer ones I thought actually. Yeah. Uh penthouse. Um but where the exact penis and vagina insertion point happened and in every picture somebody cut that out. And taking it with them, I guess. And I don't know if they did it because they didn't want people to see that or they wanted to have it all, you know? But I remember just weird shit like that. And that's when I started to realize this shit didn't happen to everybody. Like, for some reason, God put all this weird shit in front of me. And so those are the things that I need to focus on. And that's when I started thinking that I became a little bit more confident because I know what I'm talking about, I think. What do you mean? Like, I know what I'm... like, I'm explaining a place that I know, you know? Yeah. It's not like I'm trying to be like... Oh, when you started talking about where you grew up yeah, on stage, you got more things. confidence. You knew what you were talking about. Yeah, I knew what I was talking about. So that just helped with my confidence. So now I can tell some older jokes and bits, and there's more confidence there. But now I'm also being able to just tell new stories and still keep that same perspective that I had with these other bits. Was there racism in Covington? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a memory where you just... Bomb, you know when you, you're bombing, you got to dig yourself out. Have you ever had one where you don't get out? Yeah, I got two. One, two of my crazy memories. One time, some dude laughed so hard at the show he came out of the closet to his buddies just right in front of. <laughs> Swear to God, he's just like, yeah, I'm gay. It's like fucking literally, like jarred something in his in his stem, you know. And his buddies are like, what the fuck, dude? It's right up by the front. You made him laugh so hard, he just admitted he's gay. One of his buddies spit milk or spill it on, uh, not milk, um, beer. Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> I'm gay. Yeah. And his buddies are like, what the fuck, dude? And it was awkward because it seemed kind of real. Yeah. So, I mean, I've had people say a lot of stuff. You're like, that guy's retarded. But this guy seemed like he might have been honestly homosexual. <laughs> and then the other time that I really bombed was, because um, I'm not trying to fucking you know, bringing anybody to the other side of the sexual ledger, you know? Well, oh, yeah. Did I fall asleep one time? This cop wakes me up, right? <laughs> he goes, did you, did you see them? Do you know where they're at? And I'm like, what the fuck? I have no idea what's going on, right? He goes, somebody called in. Two wolves were fighting in the street here, right? <laughs> so, dude, wolves. I'm at an intersection of this dead town, bro. I used to, uh, I lived in this side town for a little while in high school. Fell asleep at the fucking wheel, right? So I'm dead asleep. The cop wakes me up, right? He's like, did you see it? And I'm just like, what? what? I'm just thinking, what was it? You know, did I do it? Was I involved in it? Who am I? And he's like talking to somebody else. The other guy was probably just across the street, you know? <laughs> and he's like, two, somebody called it in. Two wolves fighting in the intersection. And I'm like thinking, uh, we don't even have wolves in Louisiana, <laughs> you know? So how are you really out here looking for that? But also, shouldn't you but also be <laughs> crying? Yeah, but also you have you a two wolves drunk fighting? driver who's obviously stalled out at a stoplight. <laughs> Hey, bro, wake yeah, up. Yeah. What, he's the worst cop of all time. Yeah, the worst. Oh, my the worst. God. And he'd be like, all right, if you see anything, let us know. And they were out. No oh. problem, officer. <laughs> see you like catching wolves fighting. <laughs> Damn you wolves. I'm drunk as fuck. Don't start. Let them get electrocuted. It's all right. We need somebody to get electrocuted on this show. Yeah. <laughs> I got electrocuted when I was younger, man. Actually, you know who saved me, bro? I was a brother saved me, man. And I don't know if you're out there. Would you stop already? You got electrocuted. Yeah, the you fair. Are. At the fair, they used, to let us, they, they used to let us come in a day early to the fair and test the rides. We didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know we were getting kids. 30 cents. Get on the rides. Please on the ones and twos now. <laughs> like a fucking... You look like a fucking m M&M. m Humans? Yeah. Just okay. people that are just smoking their own dicks out there who have no real... Light. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've met some people who... Yeah, they're breathing, but... That's it, yeah. really. Yeah, this idea know? that we're all created equals. You've never met anybody that's a genius, if you say that. I've met some people that I'm like, I talk to them, I go, oh, I'm like a monkey yeah. compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Dude, I talked to your buddy Eddie Bravo, and that guy is a real. He's out there. He's like a jet. He's like a deaf, 
like a deaf Jack Russell almost, you know? A deaf Jack Russell? Yeah, because once he gets going, you can't... Oh, Jack Russell Terrier? Yeah. You ever been around one of those dogs? You open the car, and then the next thing you know, they're at the... Yeah. They're like sick, yeah. But well, how's he deaf? Because you can't get him back. Like, once he goes, you can't... You know what I'm saying? You can't get him back in the car. Like, you're sitting there honking the horn. You can't... That guy's out there. You know my home. You know what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about, but I've never heard anybody make a, a, a description like that. A deaf oh. Jack Russell Terrier. That is hilarious. He's extravagant, dude. Yeah.